Good evening, everybody. Uneducated Economist here. A lot of you guys really like that video that I was talking about, the world shadow currency. And I thought it would be a good idea to talk about the shadow banking current or shadow banking system that takes place here in the United States. If you can understand the shadow banking system, then you'd probably understand the shadow currency a whole lot better. Now, in the shadow banking system here in the United States, I found a study that they talked about talked about the shadow banking and it's really good. The only thing about it is, is that it is very complicated and it is very, uh, very deep. And they use a lot of lingo that if you're not already familiar with how the federal reserve and the financial system kind of works, you're going to be kind of lost inside of what they're talking about. So I thought I would do a little bit of a breakdown of this uh, study that they, that these guys have put together to make it a little easier that as you read it, you'll kind of understand of what they're talking about ahead of time. Now, in the introduction to this shadow banking, they talk about the, the difference between shadow banking and traditional banking system. Now, in the traditional banking system, you basically have the Federal Reserve as the provider of liquidity. And then you have private sector, or I'm sorry, then you have the FDIC providing the insurance for the deposits. So the banks basically travel down this corridor between the Federal Reserve and the FDIC, and they do all the operations in between there. The shadow banking system, very similarly, sim similarly, in a similar fashion, the private, the uh, shadow banking systems gets their liquidity from the private sector. So private investors are the ones who are bringing in the liquidity, and the insurance is done by wraps and guarantees, or at least that's the way they describe it in the, in the study. And I'm assuming that's like the credit default swaps that the, uh, that, you know, these insurance companies provide. So that's the, that's the corridor that the shadow banking systems travels down private money coming in and the credit default swaps, private money, basically insuring the, the shadow banking system. Traditional banking system uses the public, public, you know, FDIC government issued, you know, agencies are, are taking care of the traditional banking system, even though it's the Federal Reserve, which is a private bank. Anyway, that's the difference between the two. Now, where the issue starts to lie is that in the federal, in the, in the traditional banking system, they have the Federal Reserve that is issuing the liabilities. That is the li liquidity that makes the system function, right? That's the cash that's in the system. Over in the shadow banking system, it's a little different. As these mortgage-backed securities and asset-backed securities are written and the contracts are built and you sign your name to them and they collateralize those things, they jumble up a bunch of loans together and sell them off as a package. When they do this, when they're creating all these instruments of debt, they are also creating a short-term liability. That short-term liability is sort of like the money, the, the, the liquidity that allows the system to function. Now, it's really hard to kind of wrap your head around that, but over in the traditional banking system, if you can imagine like banks hold treasuries and let's just say treasuries, the banks hold treasuries, but sometimes they actually need cash. They don't need treasuries. They don't want treasuries. They want the actual liabilities from the Federal Reserve. Those actual liabilities is what makes the system function. It's what gives the lubrication into the piping system that makes things flow. So when you need to loan or borrow money, you need to borrow the liabilities, the cash from the Federal Reserve. Over in the tradition or over in the, in the shadow banking system, they really don't have that cash available. They have their own cash, so to speak, as these short-term liabilities. Here's the problem. Not having that cash that flows into the system or have access to the cash coming from the Federal Reserve, the shadow banking system is reliant on new cash or cash coming from the private sector. When there is a drawdown in the shadow banking system, there is no cash for them to go to. They need to start selling their assets off in order to get the cash to cover the contracts that they have written. Does that make sense? Okay. Because that's where it comes in. And in fact, I think it's described in there. Let me see if, uh, if I wrote this down right. It says, it was the credit, liquidity, and the maturity transformations by issuing short-term liabilities. It is those guarantees that transfer the risk between the core financial institutions and the shadow banking system. Okay. It was the credit, liquidity, 
in the maturity transformations by issuing short-term liabilities, and it was those guarantees that transferred the risk. So as they were writing up and doing these contracts and playing their game in the shadow banking system, it is that part right there, that short-term liabilities that they were issuing that transferred the risk from the shadow banking system into the traditional banking system. So as that shadow banking system had the problems and started having a drawdown, it started pulling cash out of the real system to cover what those basically as the private investors weren't contributing new liquidity into the market, into the shadow banking system, the people who had the, the contracts in the shadow, inside of the banking system who couldn't get any more liquidity coming from the private sector needed to cover their, their leverages and their more margin calls and everything else that they have used to leverage up inside of the shadow banking system, they needed to start selling those things off and that started pulling the cash out of the, out of the traditional banking system. This is why we started having the problems during 07 and 08. Now, the Federal Reserve had to step in. The government agencies, the, uh, let me see if I got this down right. The Commercial Paper Funding Facility, the CPFF, provided liquidity for the commercial paper. The Term Asset Backed Securities Loan Facility, TALF, TALF, a lot of people remember that one. And the Primary Dealer Credit Facility. These were the three agencies that basically added direct, uh, direct liquidity into the shadow banking systems as they were basically pulling these mortgage-backed securities off and getting them onto the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. So that's kind of like an introduction into the shadow banking system, okay? And I tried to break that down as very simply as I could because we're going to go deeper into this and we're going to go a little bit farther, but that should give you a good introduction into the shadow banking system. All right, uneducated economist, <laughs> you guys let me know.